Hi, welcome back. Jeff Frick here. We are on the ground in Phoenix, Arizona at the Phoenix Convention Center at the 14th annual Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing. And uh, we're really excited to be here. 8,000 women and a few men sprinkled in, really talking about education issues in women, professional issues, there's recruiting going on, a really exciting event that's been going on for a long time, so we're happy to come out here and cover it. We're excited for our next guest, Penny Hersher, the president and CEO of First Rain. Penny, thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. So uh, give us a love Date. Actually, it's very contextual. I see your your company has a, uh, involved the Salesforce and Dreamforce is coming. So you found yes. that you found time to come down here before you're going to be busy next week in the that's city. That's right. Dreamforce is the big event in my industry, so Absolutely. that's next week. Yep. And what is and what does uh, First Rain do? So we solve some very hard problems for customers. We call it personal business analytics. Okay. We're basically helping our customers have a really deep understanding of their customers. So we help them know when to call their customer, what to say, how to engage with their customers customer are using a lot of powerful analytics to do it. So Excellent. And you'll be very busy next week. Very busy next <laughs> week. Yeah. Okay, but, we, but we're here now. We're at the event. Yes. Um, so you've been coming for a few years. Talk about how this event has changed over time and why it's important to be here. So yes, I've been involved for many years. I was on the board of the Anita Borg Institute for 11 years, came off a year ago. They run the event. Right. And uh, I've seen it go from you know, 1,000 people to the 8,000 people we have here today. Uh, it's very exciting to see so many young women. 50% of our attendees are students. 50%? 50%. Wow. And uh, we're all about how do you recruit, retain, and advance young women in the field of technology. As you know, it's a, it's a creative issue, it's a moral issue, and it's an economic issue that we provide gender equality. And so we got a lot of companies here helping us do that, and we want to show the young women that technology is a fantastically exciting place to be, and they should stick with it, even though sometimes the culture can be a little rough. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty interesting that, that schools and companies bring so many people here um, yeah. Um, to participate, obviously, you know, to, to feel what's going on. And then also as a recruiting event, we've heard a number of people say this is a great place to come find top talent. It is a great place. In fact, we've got some big companies and small companies recruiting here. Companies like Apple and uh, Palantir and LinkedIn and Google. And my daughter is here looking for a job. Oh, very good. So, <laughs> so anyone, track her down. <laughs> but fa it's a fantastic conference for young women to see the breadth of opportunity that they can have here and to network and meet with people like them so they can see that even though sometimes they might, they might be the only one on a technical team, there are actually lots of other women like them. So it's, it's a very, very important event and that's why it's growing so fast. So uh, because it's big and it's been around before, right, you got to keep it spiced up and adding a little controversy. So you were involved, I know, in a panel uh, I think it was called the Men Allies Panel. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about, um, first of all, you know, kind of adding that. I understand it was new this year, kind of some of the things that went on in terms of that yes. ad. And then how did the panel actually go? So it was a new idea that um, men predominantly hold power and privilege in technology and so we need to team with them to change the culture and make it more welcoming to women. And so um, ABI put a board together of four men, senior executives in technology from Google, Facebook, Intuit and GoDaddy and they asked me to moderate. And uh, I think the panel was moderately successful in that uh, the four men spoke openly about what they see and what they feel, but um, we didn't have enough interaction with the audience and so there was some controversy around mm. that. Uh, were we listening? And uh, at one point I did go off script and say to them, gentlemen, you know, I, I have to go off script, this all sounds so nice, so what's the issue? And uh, so they responded to that. Um, and I believe there's actually another panel today, which is two of the panelists listening. So um, we have to engage the men in this issue. Uh, they do hold the power. And many of them care very, very passionately about gender equality. And so we believe it's time that we actually figure out how to get the conversation going, although it might be a little rocky to start with. But yeah. we're, we're having the conversation and we're very active on social media. If you um, follow uh, it's hashtag GHC Man Watch, there's a okay. very... Uh, 
active conversation about how to how to get a good conversation going. We'll have to look at that one. Certainly, the GHC 14 uh, was lit up by Satya earlier today. Yes, um, I gather he was fantastic. He, I, I couldn't make it, but I heard he was very so fantastic. So apparently, there's a little controversy around whether women should ask for equal pay or just keep working along and and you'll get it eventually. Oh, I don't want equal pay. I want more money. <laughs> so that 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 <laughs> so the, the Twitter thing is still going on. So I don't know yes. how you were uh, actively collecting um, audience participation for the panel, but certainly it seemed that the social the social uh, channel on Twitter just literally lit up. I mean, we were we were watching it down here. So yeah, it's no, an it's engaged a, community. It's a contentious issue. There is absolutely no reason in the world women should not be paid equally to men. No reason in the world. It's just morally wrong. You're right. So <laughs> give us the. Uh, Give us the bumper sticker here. You've been coming to these for a while. It's a great event. Why should people come to the celebration of women in computing? Men and women should come to really understand how powerful it is for young women to get involved in computer science and how until we have gender equality, we need programs and systems to help them stay in it. And I lied, I'm not done yet. I, one more, I want you to look directly <laughs> into the young women in the audience and okay. their families, both, right? Because it takes families to, to, to support it. What, what would you, advice would you give to them in trying to enter this world um, in, a, in a career in computing and technology? So I would say it's the most fun you'll ever have. You can change the world through technology. Um, it's where you'll have the most impact over the next 20 to 50 years. And just go for it. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Great. Well, Penny, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes out of your busy day. I'm Jeff Frick. We're at the celebration of women in computing, the Grace Hopper event in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm Jeff Frick, signing off.